Okay, so welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and uh, uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm down here in one of the funnest places on earth, sunny, uh, well, I say Myrtle Beach, but uh, I guess it's North Myrtle Beach, is that right? Technically, I mean, we're, we're still in the Grand Strand. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so uh, tell the audience who I've, who I've got here today, who's the interview today? Uh, your interview today, my name is Thomas Slack with Shed Windows and More. Um. Anyway, so yeah, my name is Thomas Slack with Shed Windows and More. Uh, we're, as you said, we're down here in beautiful South Carolina. It's beautiful blue skies. You can't beat the weather down here in the summer. It's beautiful, man. Um, certainly appreciate the opportunity to even come down here, uh, get to know you. Um, I think we've talked a little bit uh, here and there on the phone. We've communicated through email, but we found out a really cool thing, uh, or at least I did today, and that is in my early years of purchasing – um, it's gotta have been maybe roughly like eight years ago or so, uh, if that uh, somewhere around in there that I had actually reached out to you about some, um, shutters and about some flower boxes, uh, yeah. way back in my early days in purchasing. And I, I kind of put together now after all that conversation that we spoke even back then. So you talk about coming full circle. It's kind of a cool thing after all these years to to just come back around and get to know somebody and, and uh, meet somebody. And and here we are interviewing you today for the Shed Geek podcast. So yeah. um, Thomas, tell me a little bit like your, your business here looks really cool. Uh, I was already talking to some of your employees, some things that strike me almost immediately just upon like naturally gazing around and, and, and whatever is your magazine and the sense of humor that you guys have your catalog and how you've got your, head guard dog and your people greeter and your guard dog listed absolutely as part of the team (laughs) i mean like everybody everybody who has a dog your dog is what part of your family that's right and that is you walked in the first thing i greeted you was what not a human being (laughs) it was you know what you're right two or three fur babies sprinting down a hallway going hi look at me love me i told my wife i said you know what uh my dog we have a boxer named lucy and uh I said, uh, you're never near as excited to see me as Lucy as I can promise you. <laughs> so there's a reason they call it man's best man's friend. Man's best friend. That's not, right. Not not mom or or wife's best friend. Yeah, that's exactly right. So really love what you're doing here. Your employees were talking about the growth that you guys are seeing. You and you're already, you know, moving into a, a, a bigger building. I mean, you've been at this for so long. No one wakes up, in my opinion, and says, hey, I want to sell sheds or doors or windows or just sheds in in general, uh, rent to own, whatever. There's a story. There's always a story that says, hey, this is how we got here. Tell me a little bit about your story. How did sheds, windows, and more come to be? How did Thomas Slack find the the shed industry, or did it find you? Um, Well, it actually wasn't me that found it. Okay. So uh, we're actually a woman-owned business. Okay. Uh, my mother, Teresa, started this business back in 2003. So uh, the story basically is real simple. I was a child, and we had a shed in our backyard. Well, what are kids, and especially young boys and uh, teenagers? They're rambunctious. They're uh-huh. wild. Uh, I kind of put a, a six-foot bow staff through a window <laughs> by accident. <laughs> And, well, looking at Home Depot, looking at Lowe's, looking at your Ace Hardwares, mm-hmm. you couldn't really find a window for a shed. So yeah. it's like, well, crap, what is what are we going to do? Um, the place we bought the shed didn't want to sell us a window. So she found a company that would sell her a window, but she had to buy 10 at a time. Well, back in 2003, a brand new company kind of was trying to get off the ground. Everybody today knows it as eBay. So she got the uh, she got the windows, replaced what we needed to, put made me replace it, in fact. <laughs> rightfully and, so. Well, rightfully so. I mean, <laughs> at that time and at that age, uh, and at, my father was teaching me everything about home renovations. Uh-huh. So I was laying wood floors down. Nice. I tore down railings to put half walls. We tore out the kitchen. I tore out the bathrooms, renovated the entire house. So it was nothing that, like, go replace the window. I go, Psh, that's as easy. Yeah. Pop the trim off, pop the window off, put a new one on, go. Nice. So that's how we got started. Um, she sold the windows there. Oh, okay. That's cool. Let me, and that, I made a couple bucks. Let me try it again. And it snowballed. Um, 
our original business, and still to this day, and that we focus on two markets. We back then, and the way we started our business, we focused on the DIY do-it-yourself or weekend warrior. Okay. So everybody that like, for instance, say if you had no background in the shed industry, uh-huh. but you want a storage shed, you're semi handy. Your wife's gonna look at you and say, "Go put a building out back so I can put my Christmas stuff. Uh-huh. Get the lawn out of my garage so I can pull my car in." Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't want my car to. I don't want to get wet getting in and out of the driveway. Right. So that's kind of how we got into the DIY industry is through and at e-commerce. Okay. So we actually built our entire business around e-commerce platform with no minimums. That led into selling online, which we ended up finding customers that repetitively bought. So as we started realizing these trends, well, let's reach out to them. What are they doing? Oh, I'm a small shed builder. I only build 12 to 30 buildings a year. Oh, well, since you keep buying from us, here, let us help you out. Buy direct, get off the uh, e-commerce platform, Mm -hmm. and we'll go there. We'll give you a discount. That's kind of how we started the wholesale program. Nice. So our main focus in that that we sell to is we try to sell mainly to the small and medium-sized businesses that really want to focus on that keyword called quality. Mm Mm-hmm. We do sell to a lot of the larger guys as well uh, that do the 120 to 200 buildings a, a week. Those great companies are fantastic. I love their business, but they focus on price. And that they still build a good quality building, but they're working on that margin, kind of like we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I really, I really enjoy building relationships. Um, that's kind of why I like the smaller Builders, because mm-hmm. I can actually get on the phone, go to their location, see what they're doing, help them optimize what they're doing Absolutely. to build those margins. Where the big guys, you know what? These guys are super smart. They have consultants that come in, and that, or they've been doing it so long, they know how to optimize a building and yeah. how to do the assembly process. And, man, let me tell you, I've walked in some awesome facilities. <laughs> well, and even if you get outside of the shed industry, it's sort of a – common knowledge i guess you would say that um typically speaking if you can find a way to win in the area that you're in if you're bigger you can win on price a lot of times because you can make uh you know work in those margins if you're smaller you can win on service i mean that's one of the things that you would say if you're a mom and pop is like what do we do that's so much nicer well we're not a chain restaurant you know we we focus on you know knowing every guest giving them the best experience it's not that those large companies probably don't try that too. It just becomes harder as you scale mm-hmm. to be able to keep keep that. You know, we talk, uh, have have mentioned it a lot of time on some of the Facebook pages and all that. And me and my wife had a big conversation about this on the way down. Um, um, Sam's going to, he's going to laugh at this right now, but um, Sam Byler. But um, I'm a big fan of Bucky's. Oh, okay. You know, I'm a big fan of Bucky's because what they've really done is They've created in such a short time the optimum, um, I don't know, I guess you'd say tier in terms of service and what people would see if you're out traveling. And as me and my wife are traveling, you know, there's all these other places around names that are familiar, Shell, Pilot, Flying J, and and all, you know, fine establishments. But Bucky's really took it to a whole new level. Um, Me and Richard Miller was talking the other day about how, like, they will – just introduce their they'll, they'll welcome you whenever you walk in mm-hmm. you're gonna know that they're there so where am i going with this customer service you're okay. a small company now bucky's is becoming very big, big very, <laughs> very very big and very oh, yeah. large and hopefully they can hold on to that but um those things come to mind in terms of service um, there's certain companies that i don't work with in my personal life uh, outside of the shed industry because of the poor customer service i've i've received and i'm not saying any of these large companies provide bad Customer service. Oh, I'm saying it's an area where you can win as a, as a small person because you're more fluid. You can make decisions quicker. Um, and I love that your heart is for the small business. Um, I, I completely echo your sentiments there. I am a fan of small business. I'm a fan of seeing uh, them uh, be profitable and just grow. And you really see the direct result of it more because you see how it affects their family you know, when you know them and when you're friends with them. So I totally get it. So, so the shed industry kind of found your mom at your mischievousness in the backyard. 
Yeah, that's a first. That's a first here on the Shed Geek podcast. I'll, I'll have you know. So I, I appreciate that. Um, what's your experience been like then since 2003? Gosh, it's been a roller coaster, I'm sure. It's, well, it's been a roller coaster. So we've actually we've been and I blessed heavily um, yeah. since we started because again we are such a niche um, in our market and that we started with the no minimums and that where all these other companies that um, that also sell similar items to us and that they have, you have to order so much that so much that minimums, this min- uh, minimums that it didn't bother. We actually built our infrastructure to take care of that because yeah. who was our demographic, the weekend warriors, the DIY. So us growing into the wholesale market gave us a huge advantage, which is great. Um, is that yours? No, yeah, that oh, that was, was you. that's on me. Okay, because I was like, <laughs> I don't. And it's like, oh, it's in my pocket. And I was like, I swore I put it on vib- uh, silent. Um, but yeah, so we actually kind of backed into that, um, which is great. And that so a lot of and it helped a lot of the small guys. Um, I forget where we're going. I got distracted. So. <laughs> well, just my, my idea is thinking about the small, the small guys and how you have built your business around them. But well, absolutely. I mean, the, the big thing, a lot of the, the small medium shed guys is they focus on quality mm-hmm. and most of the small guys are all family run. Well, years ago, and that, uh, I was talking and I actually, the, the very first shed show we went to, which was in, Early in that probably the early 2000s, like 2008, 2010, okay. it was kind of our first show and talking with people. And really, there's not many family run people in our mar- in our in our field in our market. Um, and that there's only one or two other companies that you can consider family ran. And so we were getting to talking, and well, I don't know, my father and I were working the booth. Mm-hmm. And my father looks at me and was talking to a gentleman. I was, and I, I looked at him, was talking to another one. I, and almost simultaneously, we go, Look, we, and that we both strive to bring quality products from our family to yours. Yeah. And I mean, and that's why we actually started printing that on our catalog because we came up with the same kind of idea talking to different people and kind of just pointed mm-hmm. that guy right there is my old man. And that the woman sitting in the in that back taking a break, getting off her feet, is my mother. Yeah. We run this together. Yeah. Um, everybody you talk to in my office is related somehow, or they've worked for us for so long, they've become adopted. Yeah. Into the family. So, I mean. Even the guard dogs. Even the guard dogs, absolutely. <laughs> that's why I have that beautiful golden that's a people greeter. All he does is just <laughs> so happy when he sees people. So let's talk about product a little bit for those that aren't familiar with you. And, and you've been to several of the shows even since then. I think we talked uh, at a couple of those on, on a couple of different occasions. Um, but I guess my thought is what, what for the people who don't know sheds windows and more who are listening, um, what products do you have? Let's, let's get into it. Let's kind of yeah. uh, educate them a little bit. Yeah. Let's, let's go down the education path. Yeah. So, we do and that everything that everyone else does. We do aluminum single pane. Okay. I do the hinges, the h- handles, the hardware's, and the stuff for the buildings. We okay. do the decorative items as well. Now, there's differences where, again, I'm not going to be the bottom price point. Let's talk about aluminum windows. Okay. So all of my aluminum windows and that are going to be a 1.8 mil window, uh, aluminum extrusion, which is and that a little bit thicker than what most of the industry uses. Some of them now are coming up in that quality and coming out with thicker extrusions to kind of, and that one, get, they're getting closer to what my extrusion thickness is, but also they're doing it because they're finally listening to their customer base. But when we started manufacturing, everybody would say, here's my issue with this person. Here's my issue with this person. And then I just would just gather all the problems. So when we started engineering and manufacturing, my goal was to fix every problem that everybody had. Well, what okay. did that entail? I needed thicker aluminum. I needed thicker glass. I needed to re-engineer our clip channel. I needed to change the slope on that for drainage. And I needed to and that, be able to make a window that can take a beating, not break when a staff hits it. 
<laughs> essentially. So whatever you have personal experience in the matter, yeah. it seems to really help, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> so, and now what we did is when we did that, we also made a very important decision. All of my shed windows are tempered glass. So if it's my smallest 10 inch round window, all the way up to my 36, 36 or my 24 by 48 arch top, everything is tempered. And now everyone's like, well, I may not want tempered. It costs more. It does. But here's the reason we did that. Teresa made the conscious decision that when the window is purchased by a shed builder or a mom and dad or, not, or a husband and wife even, and they're putting it in their building, it's going to a family's house. What's the chances that there's a kid around Yeah. or that there's a dog around? Yeah. Pretty high. So if something were to break... She wanted a product that would be safe yeah, for someone to be around because it's tempered. It acts as like the side window of your car. It crumbles versus shatters. Yeah. So we made that decision to put tempered in everything. So going with a thicker tempered glass, it makes it a lot harder to break. Sure. So it kind of was a good thing that we did. It also separated us completely from everybody else. So I cannot build a window as cheap as others well, I don't necessarily want to build a window as cheap as others. I right. was able to formulate who we are and what we want to do by making decisions we do and listening. So that's kind of how Absolutely. our windows came apart, came out. Um, I mentioned shutters and windows or, or shutters and uh, flower boxes yeah. earlier just because that's how we came to know each other. Yeah. What else you got for me? What else? So, uh, looking through your catalog and I'm like, wow, you guys are doing way more than I knew that you were doing. Yeah. So we actually, we have a whole domestic line of products we do. Um, everything in our catalog, if you look, we do have, we have our American flag on it to show what's made here in the U.S. versus mm-hmm. what's made overseas. Mm-hmm. And then unfortunately, I am slowly working on bringing stuff back to the U.S. I have been for the last eight years. Mm-hmm. Every year I have bring a new product back. Sure. And I'm systematically doing that as we grow and that we're setting up our new facility to be able to accept and actually go down the path to where I can start doing full window manufacturing. Nice. So that's eventually one of my goals in the next three to five years. Awesome. Is to have that up and running. Uh, some of the products that we have that make us really unique is a lot of our accessories and decorative items. Um, Everybody loves accent pieces. Mm -hmm. It's what makes you stand out. So one of the things that we do that's real easy is we make headers. And that's so when you look at our catalog, we have a place where we have two main headers, our crown molded design and our keystone. And now anybody in the Northeast knows the Keystone. It's one of the most and that iconic things for New England and Pennsylvania region. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we do a lot of Keystone headers for shed builders. We also do a lot of Keystone for in that coastal homes, um, which actually leads in that into another, which is something probably I'll bring up later. But as, as well as all of our uh, aluminum windows, we actually started a double pane aluminum line where we, again, we're doing double pane tempered glass. Nice. Which then, that is kind of our mid-tier before you hit our double pane vinyl line, which all of our double pane vinyl line, and that is all residential grade. Um, right now, we're actually in the process of designing and developing and that Hurricane um, uh, AST 1996 uh, winds, uh, zone 3 and 4 impact windows for coastal. Okay. Because we do a lot with, um, I deal a lot with Florida, but I also yeah. deal a lot with the coastline. Well, I'm here in Myrtle Beach. Sure. So a lot of our double pane vinyls, people and at these specialty sizes, they want to put them in homes. Yeah. Because they can either go in your shed to finish off to make a studio, and that's something maybe you know you may do on your one of your shed lots, or um, even and that you have all the specialty buildings. And on our website, we talk about every specialty building you can nice. dream of. Um, and any one of those specialty buildings is what a lot of our double pane vinyl go into. So you do have to, especially you brought something up and especially on the coastline, those wind ratings and sometimes the process to, um, to certify a building or whatever, it's, it becomes very daunting, you know, for a shed builder. So having a uh, supplier like yourself, who's thinking like that, uh, in terms of their product line. Just incredibly important to be ahead of the game there. You're making that process easier for them because you're making that supply easier for them to find. 
that's something we've dealt with. I mean, obviously in the shed industry has been a, a supply shortage at times and, you know, through COVID, especially uh, during those two years, we saw, you know, a lack of uh, folks being able to go to work. Mm-hmm. So we saw a shortage. Did you guys come through that? Okay. Did you feel pretty good about. So for the most part, because actually pre before COVID shut everything down, we were in our ramp up. So we okay. had, and that when COVID did the sh- major shutdown, I was already packed to and that my schemes ripping. So when COVID hit, I didn't have an issue. Um, okay. We have negotiated deals with companies and through relationship building, which is what I specialize in because let's be honest, at the end of the day, small business is never going to survive unless you build relationships. Yeah. And together as a small business, working with either medium or other small businesses, you're not going to survive unless you create those partnerships and you help each other because we're all in this together. Not yeah. one company can survive on their own and that in this, in this world and society. So that's kind of luckily with the relationships we had, I didn't have the infrastructure problem that a lot of people did. It wasn't until in that, uh, mid, in that early 2001 where it kind of, and that I hit a brick wall and that, um, and that kind of, that's kind of really when it was about March of 2001 is kind of when I hit the brick wall and was like, Oh, now I see where everybody's having the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were ahead in 2020. I'm at, in 2020. Yeah. I was ahead of the ball. Yeah. I was able to keep up. And then when a lot of my contracts expired and yeah. a lot of my deals expired, I went for renegotiation and that's kind of where it was like, and that we kept the contract because we made an agreement and I'm a, we're a man of our word. Yeah. So we're going to hold it. But now that it's done, I can't reissue a new contract yet where we can guarantee you X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And again, I understood that. So knowing that was coming, I was able to adapt. Yeah. Which is kind of why I went down more of our residential line of products because we're very diverse. Um, a lot of the stuff, and that's why in all of our Shed Builder magazine ads and all the other media that you see us on advertising, we focus right now on doors. Well, why? Doors are the easiest thing for me to manufacture. Yeah. I have no shortage of doors. Now, we can go out there, and I can t- show you right now my stock of doors. I mean, we pump three to 500 doors a week. Wow. When I'm in full swing. Yeah. And that, so there are some weeks I'm in full swing. There's some weeks I'm not. Yeah. But we pre-hang doors for custom homes all the way down to outhouses. And you, and you were talking about doing quite a bit even in the tiny home market. A tiny home falls inside that as well. Um, we do a lot with the tiny home industry. I kind of is what led us into residential. Yeah. So our natural progression was we started in sheds. And that which then led us to the specialty uh, portable building market, which mm-hmm. was chicken coops and playhouses. Mm-hmm. And then it got into the specialty finished buildings, which is your and at granny houses, your she sheds, mm-hmm. um, your art studios, your tea houses, and all that kind of stuff then turned into the tiny home market. Tiny home market then turned into small single family. Single family now has got us into light commercial uh, multifamily. So we do everything from light commercial multifamily units all the way down to our sheds. You're a busy guy. I'm extremely <laughs> busy. But I love every second of what I do, but that's what, again, makes me different from everybody else out there. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of our own brackets, our pediments, our shutters, our columns, our front entry door systems. Everything we do in-house, which allows us to compete against the major guys and be able to help large commercial and at multifamily and at builders, as well as the people building sheds, they go, hey, I want the small bracket to make my building stand out. Yeah. Well, guess what? Here's my price on it because I'm the one selling building supply centers around the country. So I give you the same wholesale price that I give them. It saves them money. They're able to add that accent, that feature, that something to their building to make it more wow. Yes. Accent pieces are such a big part. I noticed like your corbels out here. Um, I mean, just some of the latches were unique and I haven't seen them yet. And that's always pretty cool as whenever you think, you know, sheds to, 
see something new because i mean at the end of the day um shed geek podcast right so we talk about sheds it's yeah. and and i see a lot of sheds and i've been to a lot of shed manufacturers locations and whenever something catches you in terms of a product that's new or that hasn't been seen that's pretty cool um yeah. most for the most part we you know we build sort of a, a similar product you know across the across the nation i mean there's there's obviously differences um, I know most people focus on trying to build a good quality shed and they add accent pieces, but you have some here that I haven't seen yet, uh, which, like I said, I think that's pretty neat. Um, where do you think it's going, man? Where's, where's the shed industry headed? Like, what's You've been in this since 2003. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are listening that say, you know, if you've been in this for 20 years now or near it, um, where, what's its current state? What do you feel? So... Like most of the industry, the industry has a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. um, as and that, as this recession's coming, and that people are going to go back towards the economy build. Um, we, everybody here in this country is afraid of a recession coming. Uh, I just heard on the news the U.S. and that dollar is a penny off from the euro, which is one of the weakest currencies, and that in and that the United Nations. It's sad to hear. That makes me believe that we're going to go back towards a recession. Mm -hmm. So how and that what's going to happen if a recession hits? And that people are still going to need a place to put their equipment. They're still going to need a place to store stuff. They may not. They're not going to buy a new home. They're going to work on what they have. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is most likely, just like we saw in the housing crash of two thousand six and seven, we're going to see more economy buildings come up. Mm -hmm. You're going to see more sheds go back to just solid LP, smart siding, no windows, or maybe one window, maybe two windows. You're not going to get as big as the decorative, as big as the fancy. Now, I could be wrong, but that's what we saw happen in the early 2000s. People now are a lot smarter than they were then because we didn't really have a housing crash until then. Well, we're building up towards that again. So yeah. the people that went through it and lived through it are are now going, oh, I remember what it's Pre like. Being prepared. They're preparing yeah. for it. So it's and that the signs are there. So we don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to be a recession? Is it going to be a housing crash? I don't know. Uh, but we know, I know a lot of shed builders I've talked to. How can they start working towards having it, that contingency plan to have that if it does happen. And that's one of the things I talk to people daily about is, okay, well, what is your concern? And that here's what you can do and that to start marketing towards, if you want to go down that road, here's how you start marketing towards that. Mm -hmm. So um, stay inside your niche, but be able to, here's what you do to drop, to refine what you have to still stay unique, but to make it more economy. Mm -hmm. Where... Again, we make a lot of wood vents and that that go in residential. Well, we also make a lot of smaller sizes for the shed industry. So I tell people, hey, go from the nice vinyl vents that we make for you all the way down to the wood vent. Mm -hmm. Just start cutting cost and Start yeah. cutting cost and It's a way to still make your building look unique and beautiful, but it changes the material slightly, which will drop drop it by 8%. Well, there's a way to save in that 5 to 8%. Well, here's what you can do to save another couple percentage points. And that's kind of, and it becomes then a game of where can we, how can we still make our building look so unique and different yeah. and give it that quality, but get those kind of savings. So if we do start going down that roller coaster, how can we still survive and stay unique versus just competing solely on an economy, basic four walls, and that basic flooring, the basic doors. Well, we're in, yeah, even in, in, in the time of year that we're in right now, I'm hearing, and again, I don't, I don't sell sheds. I don't build sheds. Um, I did uh, sell sheds, and, and I probably still do every now and then. Uh, whenever I have a family member or somebody ask, I mean, they just kind of, hey, you're what do you do with sheds again? They don't know exactly. So uh, I try to explain to them. They don't know what a podcast is or 
why why we talk about sheds like it really there's enough interesting stuff in sheds of course absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> of course if you only knew how big the industry was but a, a lot of uh a lot of folks are talking about like a drop in sales this year mm-hmm. i mean we've had a really good couple of years uh matter of fact i got out of selling sheds in 2019 so i got out right before the boom yeah. so good for me <laughs> to take to take the uh, the year off uh, whenever we were going to see record shed sales. But <laughs> 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 you want to talk about timing. Um, but honestly, we, we've had it. It's been fairly easy even to some extent in 2020 and 2021 whenever the, the sales were up. But now we're moving into this more real side of like shed sales seem to be slumping. I, I hear that regularly, whether they are or not. I hear some companies say, hey, I'm actually doing – better than I've ever done. And, and kudos, I would say by and large, the Mm -hmm. overwhelming majority that I've run into has said that sales are down. So you have to start making changes. You have to think about products. Well, absolutely. Cause the thing was, we had a huge influx of money. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, to keep the complete uh, political side out of it, (laughs) cause I'm not even going down that. I hear you. Uh, It's a big rabbit hole. Oh man. You know, I wish people would just get to, and get along, love each other. And uh, let's go back to the 70s. Let's go to Woodstock. Let's have a great time. <laughs> I know that will never happen. But um, no, uh, realistically, and uh, there are some things that we do have to worry about. And yeah. That's coming. Um, I talk to uh, builders every single day. I hear a mix, kind of like you, I hear mixed reviews. Oh, yeah. man, we're still knocking it out of the park. And then others going, oh, we're starting to see a drop off. Well, some of those areas where there's drop-offs are your more highly populated dense areas where there's more, mm-hmm. there's more and that builders, more uh, manufacturers, more shed lots that are popping up that are coming in. So you're starting to see kind of a flood in, of that market area. And then some of the guys in a little bit more suburban areas are telling me, man, they're still knocking it out. And then when you start doing and that, um, research analysis on their market well there's only three guys in their market no and no wonder they're still knocking it out there's still a need because that yeah. market's growing like for here the grand strand and that uh south carolina and that myrtle beach all the way down from so charleston all the way up to the border mm-hmm. they call it the grand strand it's weird but it, that's what they call it so our market for instance there's really only two builders and that, and there's a couple guys that will service it, but they'll they have to drive in two hours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's really only two guys. Well, the Myrtle Beach area is the fastest growing area in the country based on percentage. That's a huge market share with no competition. So the guys mm-hmm. that are building here are hiring crews like No Tomorrow to meet the demand. And that well, if we start seeing a recession, this area is going to see and that growth and that come to a dead standstill. Mm-hmm. Um, which and that will work for them because then they just slowly reduce their crews. Um, but it's the same thing in construction. Uh, it just depends on again how much how much competition do you have, how much and that potential is there in your market. So some of that is what I think a lot of is happening is mm-hmm. a lot of people are getting into the shed industry because they're starting to notice it, they're starting to realize that there's opportunity. So I'm f- we're finding way more new people coming into the market, uh, trying to build, trying to be um, new customer inquiries are yeah. up like crazy. Um, and a lot of them aren't established businesses. A lot of them are brand new businesses since COVID. And I love all of this vents to skylights. I mean, you guys are doing uh, diamond plated thresholds. Uh, thresholds. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, so again, I mean, going back to like talking about coastline stuff, I mean, we, and that, like one of the big things we do on our coastline products is all of our roll-up doors. Because I see you just hit that yeah, page. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm continuing to be surprised as I go through the catalog. I knew your business. I've, sca- you know, scoured through your website. Uh, we've talked quite a bit, but I don't know. It's it's way more than what I expected. So Well, that's the thing is we, uh, we do a ton, um, but like uh, – uh, we were talking about coastal products. I saw that, so it made me think about it. We have a whole line of wind zoned roll up doors because mm-hmm. we do a lot with commercial. We have we deal with so much mini warehouse, and that I have erection crews uh, that 
our contractors that I've gotten friends with and I know their crews real well. Uh, we just actually help build two mini storage units from nice. the ground up. Um, I run all the material for them. They hit the site and go. Uh, but we have great relationships with our vendor for all of our roll up door material. And with that, we do a lot of uh, coastal wind zone doors through them, which, I mean, we advertise, hey, we have the mini door versions, but there's also a huge line of commercial doors. And uh, one of the other things that's new to the new this year in our catalog with mini doors is our motor system with it. We actually have a motor nice. that attaches to your mini door that you have, get two key fobs to operate it, or you just put it on, you just put the wall unit on the wall and go. So would this be, so this would be like on a on a roll up door on a barrel door on a barrel yeah on okay. a barrel roll up door um it's actually the next page if you flip. okay yeah <laughs> um, but it's it's actually called the Easy Roller fourteen it, nice it comes with everything you see there it's super freaking cool um, dude I know so many people who just like end users who even if this wasn't available. Like used to come to my lot whenever I sold and they was like, what, where do I get like some kind of roll up door? Like I'm already going to take this magazine home to like my mom because I already know her husband. I sold them a, a shed and they're going to, they're going to be asking about it. So, well, the funny thing is, is that motor, I have probably sold a good 300 just to this market. Um, I had a contractor that, uh, the one of the contractors here that built a lot of sheds, mm -hmm. a lot of people, here in this market love their golf carts oh yeah we're, we're on the coast <laughs> nothing's like and yep you just want to open up the door just, and roll out so that's what a lot of them do on um, their golf cart key they put one of the key fobs they click it their net their got their little shed opens up they get in their golf cart they drive away they click the button and it goes down um so it's actually really cool but yeah, like, I mean, we do every kind of door you can dream of um, in the shed industry, and especially when it comes to uh, single or your single fiberglass or steel doors. We also do French doors, patio style, uh, double doors as well. Skylights, vents. Yeah. yeah skylights. Uh, you know what? I, and you know what I love from my time and talking to you is it's kind of cool because you're somebody who's very hands on. You know details about every one of your products. I, I designed and developed 90% <laughs> of our products. The oh, only stuff that we distribute are stuff I didn't design. Okay. So yeah, pretty much. I, I kind of had my hand in all of it. You're an interesting, you're an interesting dude, man. Like the more I talk to you, uh, even in your personal life before, uh, one of the things that you got involved in and me and you had discussed that or talked about it was the, um, uh, you own like your own multimedia company yeah. at one point. Well, yeah. I mean, it's also, it's something I actually advertise in our, in our catalog. Um, so back in 2007, uh, right before we actually incorporated into an S corp, um, my mother had a web designer and that, which at that time, everybody was coming a web designer, but she had a web designer, um, come to her and say, I can build your website. I can do this. I can do that. The person stole her money. And I was kind of pissed about that. I was, <laughs> I just graduated high school. And I'm like, I'm a smart person. I can code. I can figure out how to build a website. So it kind of was what led me into multimedia development, which then my goal and what I started doing was I went and built her website. I found all these other companies this person screwed. And I went and built all of their stuff for free. Wow. And that to help people who got screwed, and that's kind of what got me started there. Uh, then also working during the day, uh, with tr uh, with my mother and the company. Then in the afternoons and evenings, I'd work on all the multimedia development. Started hiring a couple people, realizing, hey, I'm getting too big too fast. I'm not getting able a uh, chance to actually talk with customers anymore. I hired a project manager. I no longer dealt with it. I just was dealing with people. Yeah, that's not what I want to do. So I gave it up. Um, I passed it on to somebody. They went their own merry way. We partnered with another company, um, which we advertise in our catalog, but then we still, I still have a full graphics team here. So we actually specialize in taking care of advertising and marketing material for shed builders because not everybody can afford a graphics company 
to pay them $1,200 to make brochures and yeah. flyers and this and that. We do everything on a, on that at basically cost because it makes it affordable. Like my catalog here is designed. It's real easy for me to take all my branding off of this, swap all my photos that are in here with your photos, change all of my policies and details, take it off, put your policy details on, and basically skin this to be a catalog for you. And that's so when you go to a customer and that you're a build on site guy or you and that do custom buildings and someone comes to your sales office, you have something. Uh-huh. And that kind of, that's huge. And the only thing I do is on the rear of the catalog, I said designed and developed by Shedwin is and more. Nice. And that, but it allows people to have something unique to them. And you can obviously take out, and that I work with people, take products out. Because not everybody needs a 60-something page catalog. Right, yeah. So we refine it down um, and kind of just let them pick and choose. If you've got stuff for, like, your shingles or your siding and that color swatches, we can throw it in there as well. I've got a local printer that passes my cost onto everybody. So say, for instance, you're a builder and you say, hey, you know what? I really need help with graphics. And I got a quote from someone. They wanted twelve grand to do a full marketing thing, a logo, this, that, and the third. And it's like, for real? Here, let me go ahead and put a quote up. What do you think about this price? Let's do it. And me and two of the guys here at night, that's what we do at night. And that we just, and that knock it out in a couple hours, get stuff for you, hand it over and say, hey, here's your print ready files. We're going to go ahead and send it over to the printer. Here's your price to print it. I, I love how you speak about coding with such ease. Um, <laughs> that lets me know, uh, that you're far more techno, uh, technologically advanced than I am when you speak with such ease. Coding is not easy to me. And I appreciate that you've, you know, taken the time to learn so much and you, you use those for your craft, uh, for something that, you know, eventually this, this business with you and your mom getting together on, on this and, uh, all because you broke a window. It's such a cool story. Yeah. Absolutely. Where's it? Where's it going? Where shoulds and and windows and more going? What what what's the direction for the company? So right now we're we're kind of in the process of building um, a new facility, and that just a couple miles up the road, um, we're building a massive facility where we're going to then do all of our normal distribution out of. Then we're going to go ahead and we are starting to run as a third party warehouse for other companies getting with small businesses that don't have the capability or the logistics that we do. So since we have all the boxes, all the pack material and we can deal with small quantity orders and we can deal and work with manufacturers, what we're doing is getting these manufacturers either from overseas or domestically, we're doing their distribution. So we're actually going to be opening up a third party for, a lot of the guys in the shed, and for instance, we have a lot of people in the shed industry that we do third party and that logistics for. Okay. Uh, because they come up with a great idea, they want to sell it to the market, but they can't necessarily do the logistics, and that they can, but their price on shipping and everything is outrageous. Yeah. So we work with them to go. Okay, how can we help you? Well, we can help on the logistics standpoint. We can help with sales. So there's a lot of stuff. My catalog only has about 75% of what we do. Are you, uh, so from a scale perspective, like are you operating in like the lower 48? Are you? Uh, so we act, so our main, our main reach is actually global. So the main places we sell, we sell a lot to the, the net lower 48. We sell quite a bit to Hawaii. We sell maybe 12 to 16 orders a year to Alaska. Okay. Just because of logistics. Yeah. Let's be real. Um, but we ship all over Canada. We do a ton of Canada business. We doing, we're getting more and more into Mexico every year. Uh, we have yearly and monthly orders to Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, and Puerto Rico. Nice. So we're constantly cycling into those markets. Um, we're actually working with builders and contractors in Puerto Rico to actually help rebuild a lot of what's been destroyed over the last several years from storms. Because Puerto Rico is a very unique market. You can have a multi-million dollar mansion sitting right next to a cardboard box. Yeah. That is just how on that one side of the spectrum to the other it is. 
Yeah. And it's it's if we're not careful, we'll get back into politics again, huh? Yeah. Well that's that's why I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm choosing my words very carefully. But that's what's unique about the Puerto Rico market. So but a lot of people can't get building materials there because it's yeah. so expensive. So we're actually working with and that builders there who are working with the government to help get the taxes, the tariffs and everything mitigated. So we can actually lower the cost for them to get it in. Very nice. So that's actually one of the many things that hopefully that they're doing that legwork on, not me. What's your personal life, man, for the the folks? I, I always say that, like, folks will buy from people that they know and that they trust and, and like. And the more that they know you, um, the more transparent you are. And I'm just a big fan of that. You know, I, I believe transparency brings forth accountability. Your personal life. Who are you, man? Like, what what would you tell the shed industry? This is Thomas Slack. Well, now, now what I was nine months ago is a whole lot different from the person I am today. Okay. So, and then in the catalog, as soon as you open the cover, and that you see our yearly group photo. Uh-huh. Well, in that group photo, there's a beautiful woman holding a baby. Nine awesome. months ago, um, almost nine and a half months ago now, my son was born. That is my world now. Congrats, man. Thank That's you. awesome. Um, my wife works for me, um, and that my brother works for me. And that as well, um, we in that in the off time, now I spend time with my son, um, where most of that time I used to teach and train. Uh, I've been doing martial arts for almost thirty years now. Okay, uh, I still travel the country to teach and train. Um, I have a group here that I train uh, twice a week, but when I wasn't, and that before he was born, I would spend a lot of time working with different organizations and doing lots of training. Um, now he's around. I kind of minimize that to <laughs> only two to three days a week now. Um, changes priorities big yeah, time, priority, doesn't priority, it? Priorities change big time. <laughs> um, luckily, my wife is the most supportive person in the world. That's cool. So she's like, and then I could stretch that easily. But <laughs> honestly, at the end of the day, that little man takes every bit of stress or worry or anxiety in life yeah. and just melts it away. So, you know, that's when that now, that's kind of where after work and then until he goes to bed, he is my world. He goes to bed, I go do work. Um, I love my job. Yeah. There's not, a, there's not anything else I'd rather do. I actually left a DOD job and that a really comfortable job to come work in this industry, to come work for the business. So, you know, I look and then I look at all the people I started that job with and I see where they are. And it's like, you know what? I'm glad you guys are there. I'm glad you're GS 16s. You know, I'm happy sitting back, living the simple life. And that, that money was, is not even worth what they deal with. It's like you know, I enjoy, and I don't, work a, I don't work a darn day in my life. I bet you're, I bet you're speaking to mine and and a bunch of other hearts out there in that that you have to enjoy what you do, you have to love what you do. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. Uh, it's what people see in you, it's what shines through you, and that opportunity. Obviously, being a family man serves you well. Uh, it sounds like you adore him. What's his name? What's your his son? name is James. So. Yeah. Okay. My father's name is James. My brother's name is James. My father's name is James. So oh, I don't know. That's a it's weird a great, thing to throw in there. But it's a great, you know, it's a great <laughs> name. James is a great, powerful name. Uh-huh. Um, so at, actually, every firstborn male in the slack in that line has been named James, dating back all the way pre twelve hundred. Really? Yes. That's wild, dude. So. <laughs> And that unfortunately, and that my brother and my sister didn't follow that trend. So my wife and I really wanted to keep that tradition alive. So that's what we did. We named him after my father and that James, and then we named it after her father and that for the middle name, Christopher. Okay. So, and that it's a, and that it's just tradition. And that my brother was, my brother's middle name is after my mother's father. So it's like, you know, I like that idea. So that's, that's how we ended up getting, getting the name, but. It's, it's a good tradi- family tradition is everything man i'm so happy for you uh congrats especially uh on the new little guy i know it sounds like he's your world and man i totally get that i've got minor minor 19 and 17 now so Big it's difference. uh gosh it's it seems like it's been so long ago i think i'm closer to grandbabies for sure than i was uh going back the other going way back, so yeah. 
Um, man, I appreciate you. I think that, like I said, people buy from people they know um, and people they trust and, and transparency goes a long way. And your ability or your uh, uh, willingness to come on the show today, uh, I hope that you get tons and tons of phone calls. Uh, and, and I hope that people say, Hey, I want to know the guy who, uh, who is behind the mic. If people want to reach out to you, if they want to reach out to sheds windows and more, uh, or Thomas, how do they get a hold of you? So I know we do a fax email or phone, um, all of our contacts online. If not, we have a generic email address, which is info at shed windows and more.com. Uh, our phone number is simple. It's eight, four, three. 399-1820 or our fax number is 843-399-1826. So I love talking to people. It is the best part of my job. Most of the times I talk more than I take orders. And someone's <laughs> like, hey, I want to place an order. Cool. I'm going to send you to someone else. I'm not even logged in. I'm our- guilty. I'm guilty of the same thing. Hence a podcast. Yeah. I'm guilty. <laughs> Well, it's funny. Everyone's like, hey, I want to place an order. I'm like, hey, I'm going to send you over to someone else. And they're like, why? I'm not even logged into our sales program. <laughs> I'm just, like, really? I'm interested in the people, man. Yeah. I just want to talk to them. Business finds a way to figure itself out yep. uh, when yep. you focus on the right things. Well, that's why That's why I have That's why I have people on at office staff. They get to take the orders. I get to just sit there and, and just talk. And sh- and well, and you said it, build relationships. Yeah, it's, you know? it's what it is because... I want to hear about, I want to hear about what you have an issue with. Yeah. I want to hear. And that, so in the marketing world that I've, and that, that I built years ago, I came up with a very simple concept and I stole this concept from a friend um, and kind of built it into my own, but her, I still fall back to the way she worded it because she still words it the best. If I had a magic wand and I can fix one thing in your business, what would it be? And most people go, huh, and they think about it. Because most of their problems boil down into five very simple things. And it uh, might be a very unique thing for them, for their business, but you can eventually map it into one of the five basics. And based on those five basics, you can then start targeting it from that standpoint. Let's start okay. here, and let's slowly then lean into it to meet that really specific issue. And it all has, and it all comes back to one of those main roots. So that's kind of where I always like to ask that. And again, I, I stole from a friend. I can't even say it was my original concept. <laughs> um, I can't. I came up with. Hey, what are friends for? You yeah, know. <laughs> and, uh, but um, I, it's it's phenomenal. She actually does all of our marketing for us um, because I don't have the time, so I, I outsource it to her and. She does me really well, but that's that's one thing I have stolen and proud to say I've stolen from her because it's great. That's right. Um, if you gave a 30-second message to the shed industry, if you wrapped up um, who you are, what you do, what would you do in, in 30 seconds? 30 seconds? It's real simple. And that it was a pleasure to meet you if you ever need anything. And I just remember, quality products from our family to yours. Absolutely. Simply said, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Your willingness to come on today. Um, I think I got a new friend here in South Carolina. Hey, we're here at the beach. I tell everybody you can't beat Myrtle beach. <laughs> One of the best vacation places. If you're a golfer, Hey, come play golf. There you go. Invite me to play golf. I will show you. I'm the best retriever that you'll ever meet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you up on that golf game. But hey, you should. And you missed your top hat. Yeah. And that chance right there on your nice little fancy soundboard. Hey, man. I told you we'll work on that. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir.